Okay, um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jesse. This is Alana, uh, Lucas, and David. And uh, we are the Sabigos project. Um, before we start, I know that, that Professor Hajek already asked, but uh, we, we want to make sure. Is there any FBI agent on the room? Okay. No? Oh, damn. So you can, you can arrest us after the presentation, right? <laughs> okay. Um, on this project, we are using, we want to, we are using uh, the domain name system uh, as a channel for malware. We want to compromise a computer, injecting a malicious code in there, and uh, sending instructions to a target machine so it can do something, um, to steal a file, for example. And, uh, and to do that, we are exploring uh, the so-called domain name system. But what is DNS? Okay, so we're going to talk about what is DNS, and uh, we're going to show it to you uh, the testing environment, uh, some vulnerabilities we explored in the malware, and uh, some demonstration. Okay, uh, so what is DNS and why do we choose to explore DNS? Well, um, DNS stands for Domain Name System and uh, it has a critical function on the internet. It, tr it translates names, domain names like Yahoo or Facebook.com to, into IP addresses. Uh, for example, we can compare DNS as a phone book. Uh, the, same, the same way you have, uh, you have a number to each name, uh, each name on the internet has a, an IP address, a specific IP address for that name, and vice versa. Okay, so we choose to explore DNS because uh, usually DNS traffic does not get filtered or inspected by any traffic uh, monitoring solution, and uh, is allowed to flow to flow freely through most networks. And because of that, uh, potential attackers take advantage of that. Okay, uh, so for our project, uh, in the first days we have a, a very basic testing environment, which is made by a target machine running Windows 7. We chose to explore the, uh, Windows 7, and uh, a web server hosting any website, and uh, the DNS server, which is the key for the whole process. And uh, later on, we used um, Kali Linux to send the malware into the target machine. For those who don't know, Kali Linux is uh, an operational system with the sole purpose of exploring vulnerabilities in other operational systems. And uh, okay, so you may wonder how does exactly the malware got there in the first place. So, Alana, could you explain there in more details? Okay, so. It is really easy. it is not hard to get access to a web server or to a computer connected to the internet. We can use social engineering or known vulnerabilities. Flash, Java, Google Chrome, they all have known vulnerabilities that can ex be exploited uh, by hacking tools. Uh, one hacking tool that is in Kali is called Metasploit and is the one that we used. So uh, we exploited a vulnerability on Microsoft's HTML and Gain that targets Internet Explorer 8. So we basically sent to anyone a uh, URL, can be a company, or maybe we sent to someone here, and uh, you click it, and uh, you, you access using Internet Explorer, and now we have access to your machine through Metasploit. And we can upload our malware that can be used for stealing information or for espionage. Okay, um, so for you guys have a bigger picture of how, of how DNS works. Um, okay, so now suppose that the target machine is infected and uh, the user needs directions to google.com, for example. Um, the target machine will make an IP address request to the DNS server, and uh, if it's in there, it will map to an IP address. If it's not in there, it will keep searching on the DNS servers until it finds uh, an IP address that matches the name. And uh, when you do that, it will send back the specific IP address of the name, google.com, back to the target machine, and now the user can access uh, google.com. Okay. But on this stage, this is where uh, our malware starts to act, because at the same time that the target machine is making those trustable IP requests, the malware is running on background, and uh, it's sending uh, malicious requests 
to the DNS server too. And uh, from the DNS server, we are sending commands back to the victim's machine, and those commands could be to open a folder, a folder and uh, to take a file or any command output. And then DNS server that is resolving names for the target machine is actually acting as a command and control server, uh, sending those commands back to the victim's machine. Okay, after social engineering and hacking part, let's assume the malware is already installed on the computer. And let's talk a little bit about the malware behavior. We need two programs running at the same time. One at DNS server, who will listen to the client's machine request. And the other one is on the client side, listening to the DNS server packets. The malware will start uh, running as soon as the client's machine powers on. Uh, you send an IP address and a MAC address. Uh, it will be a unique unique in the identifier to the DNS server, and then the malware will enter in a sleeping mode until it receives a command. So it means that uh, you have a persistent access to the client's machine. And you can wait, keep, you can wait and keep monitoring as long as you need. It could be an hour, a month, or a year, for example. And then when the site sends a command, you'll be sent from a graphical interface on a DNS server. This interface it shows all the client's IP and MAC addresses, and a history of commands, uh, a prompt for the next command, and the results. All the commands are encrypted. So if you look at the contents of the packet sent uh, to the client, it will be just, just be a long string with letters and numbers. And it can only be decrypted using a key uh, that is inside the malware's uh, code. We have a lot of control over the client's computer, and the commands could be anything, such as, such as listing a directory or a folder, retrieving files, shut down and restart the computer, or even taking a picture for the web, uh, from the webcam. So now I'm going to show you a demonstration of uh, how all of this works. So this is our DNS server. We use it for uh, keeping track of the victims and also send the commands to the to the, uh, to the victims. This is a target machine, so we have our malware already installed on it. As soon as the user logs on, the malware sends its IP and MAC addresses to the DNS server. So now suppose we want to execute a command on the target machine. So we have, we're gonna have the target machine on the right and the DNS server on the left. If we type in, the, for example, a list directory command on the DNS server and send it to the malware as a DNS answer, the malware executes that command and sends the output back to the server. So here we have the output of that command. Now suppose we want to steal a file from our victim. So we just send uh, the file path to the malware. The malware receives that, again, as a DNS answer and uploads back to the server. So all of this was done using uh, DNS requests uh, in background, so the user doesn't notice that. And uh, so as you can see, this is a Wireshark log. There are a lot of, there are thousands of thousands of DNS packets. And uh, so uh, it's very hard for the user to find out that it's being attacked. Also, we have our command encoded so if the user opens our packet, uh, he's going to see just a long string of characters and not like a command or a file path because that would be suspicious. In conclusion, we have two main points. The first one is the DNS port has shown a great potential for command and control. The, needs, the DNS port is essential to the computer. If you block the port, you block your access to the external world, to the internet. And also, this part is hard to be filtered because what you are sending are ordinary requests and responding it with encrypted text. Uh, the second point uh, is the vulner vulnerabilities. It's incredible how even the most known systems have a lot of vulnerabilities. And several more are being discovered every day. So this means that if you don't keep your system and programs updated, you may be a potential victim, a victim to our malware. Thank you. Thank you.